as we get mics to Dan and Benny, they're going to read the scripture for us. We have two pieces of scripture, and both of the scriptures from Matthew and Luke is the story of the angel of God proclaiming to Joseph in one instance and Mary in the other that they are about to be given the humble responsibility to be the parent of the Messiah. Let's hear the word of God. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him, and in the dream, said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look. A virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman, who was labeled unable to conceive, is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. This is a story of what we know to be the Christmas Jesus, right? Christmas, Jesus' birthday. And I like the Christmas Jesus. That's what Will Ferrell says in one of my favorite movies. It should have won an Oscar. Talladega Nights, A Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Anyone else seen that? Hey, come on. You can, you can say it. It's okay. All right. You can admit it. That's right. Well, so uh, Will Ferrell plays a stock car driver named Ricky Bobby. And he says, dear tiny Jesus, he's praying. Well, why don't you just watch? You'll see for yourself. Does he nail that grace is what he said, right? All right, that may or may not have been, you know, church appropriate. Believe me, I edited that significantly from the original. <laughs> so don't watch it with your family necessarily. But uh, I like that prayer, though. You know, it's, think about someone who really does not have a strong relationship with their Savior. 
but they just want to pray. He's doing the best he can based on where he is in life, right? And we all go through that. But he prays describing the Jesus that he likes best. Golden fleece diapers, tiny balled up fist, fat balled up fist, sorry. Have you ever seen, you've seen baby, right? Little, he says that, I'm picturing little babies with that little cute fist. But he didn't get away with it, right? His family chimes in. But Jesus grew up, his wife says. You don't always have to call him baby. Ricky Bobby lets her know, no uncertain terms, as you saw up there. When you say grace, you can pray to grown-up Jesus, teenage Jesus, bearded Jesus. But I like the Christmas Jesus best when I'm saying grace. So he prays. Dear eight pound, six ounce, newborn infant Jesus, don't even know a word yet. But listen to this, so cuddly, gotta get that in. But still omnipotent. Even Ricky Bobby gets it right in the end. Thank you for all your power and grace, dear baby God. Amen. Now we might or might not laugh at Will Ferrell. Whether we like that or not, or appreciate that prayer, if we're honest, we like the Christmas Jesus best. Many of us. We love to sing. Come here, sing it with me, right? Away in the manger, no crib far. You know this, right? Okay. What about go tell it on the mountain? Jesus Christ is born. We enjoy our Christmas pageants with glittery stars and children dressed up in bathrobes as shepherds. And we Join our voices and sing, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. We like the Christmas Jesus best. But Ricky Bobby's wife is absolutely correct. Jesus did grow up. The world, however, like Ricky Bobby, prefers baby Jesus, much more so than the grown-up Jesus. You see that cute little baby lying in that manger? It's worth some money. There's commercial value in our nativity scenes. This is the challenge for Christians at Christmas time. We must be able to separate, or at least reconcile, the commercial, secular Jesus from the genuine article. We don't want a dear tiny Jesus in golden fleece diapers to distract us from the one who is the true son of God, right? The most high God, it says in Scripture. So the story of the angel Gabriel's visit to Mary in the Gospel of Luke, this gives us a glimpse of the genuine Jesus. And you can tell his authenticity by the presence of brand names. Let's think about commercialism, right? Brand names. Scripture gives us names like favored one, Emmanuel, Jesus, son of the most high God, servant of the Lord. Unless you see these names, you might be dealing with a knockoff. So let's look at these. First, we have favored one. From Luke chapter 1, verse 28, we get this name, Gabriel gives it to Mary. He says, greetings, favored one. Now later, he comforts her by saying, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. What an amazing gift that is, right? To be favored by God, fully accepted and supported by the one who created you and loves you and gives you a source of eternal life. One of the giants of Christian history, Martin Luther The Lutherans know him a little better than we do, but that's right. He was a one-time German monk who sparked a reformation in the church. This is in the year 1517. That's a long time ago. But for years, Martin Luther was deeply troubled. He had doubts about his faith, but he kept studying and kept praying. And he felt like he had to work so hard to get into heaven. But then he realized through his questions, how can I be accepted by God? How can I find favor with the Lord? He had this breakthrough that he was completely dependent on the mercy of God. That there's nothing he could do to get himself into heaven other than to be obedient and to trust. This insight ignited the Protestant Revolution. 
and then greatly influenced theologians like John Wesley. But actually, Luther's discovery wasn't a discovery at all. It was a rediscovery. See, this is exactly what Mary had unearthed when that angel came. Mary knew this. We knew this from Scripture, that salvation is a gift from God. It's given to us. And it's a gift that comes through faith, not works. Mary didn't do anything to deserve to be the mother of Jesus. God chose her, favored her, and gave her that humble responsibility. We can become favored ones. We are the favored ones of God when we put our faith in the real, genuine article, Jesus. No substitutes, except no substitutes. The second name to look for is Emmanuel. Now, it's true that this particular name is not mentioned in the Luke passage that we read, but it is in Matthew, where we find, it says, Matthew 1, verse 23, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The promise of Emmanuel is powerful because it means that God is with us now and will be forever. God will be with us through sickness and and stress and conflict and confusion and failure and frustration, mourning and grief, despair, even death itself. The power of God overcomes Nothing in all creation, this is from Romans 8, 39, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the guarantee of Emmanuel, God with us. So where's this name in the story of the angel and Mary, if it's not mentioned? And if it doesn't appear when we read Mary's story, does it mean that it's not true? That it's a knockoff we're dealing with? No, if you look closely, it's just hidden. When Gabriel arrives, he says, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Emmanuel. God is with us. So the message to Mary and to us is that God is with us. In every time, in every place, every situation, we have to have faith that the love of God is available to us. That's the Emmanuel brand. Third, the Gabriel, um, angel Gabriel says, in um, Luke 1, 31, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. This name has a clear and specific meaning. Jesus means God saves. The Aramaic, it's like Ishwa, Ishwa, and it means to rescue, to save. Nothing subtle about the name Jesus. This announces that God is working through his son, Jesus Christ, born to Mary and Joseph from divine intervention. He's working through Jesus to save us from sin and death. This is an authentic Savior, a genuine Jesus. As the Christmas carol says, Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. I love that one. Born to save, you know, that is so genuinely Jesus. And fourth, the last one, and probably the most important one for us to understand, Gabriel promises Mary that he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. That's from Luke 1, verse 32. The Son of the Most High. Now, that is not a powerless baby with a fat little balled up fist, right? This is the mature Son of God with power and authority like his ancestor, King David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, says Gabriel. And of his kingdoms, there will be no end in Luke 1.33. So really, Will Ferrell got it right when he calls Jesus omnipotent. Not powerless but all-powerful. So we prepared to put our faith in the Son of the Most High? I mean, it's easy to worship a little baby who asks nothing of us but a diaper change and a new bottle, right? But are we willing to praise the King 
who gives the directive from Luke 6, 27, 28. This is what your the king of the Most High says. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Are we going to adore a ruler who says, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also? From Luke 6, 29. Are we likely to bow gracefully to the one who commands, give to everyone who begs from you? Luke 6, 30. No, it's much, much easier to worship a precious little baby. But if we love our enemies and we do good and we lend without expectation of return, we will be acting as obedience, obedient servants of a powerful king. Luke 6.35 says, and your reward will be great. This is a promise from Jesus. And you will be children of the Most High. See, obedience is an expectation of the authentic, real deal, genuine Jesus, God of the Most High. And at the end of the day, today's passage defines for us who the genuine Jesus really is. Mary asks how she can possibly become pregnant. She's a virgin. Gabriel speaks of the role of the Holy Spirit and the surprising pregnancy of Mary's cousin Elizabeth. And he concludes with the words we should all take to heart from Luke 137. Nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing. That's right. Nothing will be. Did you catch that? Nothing will be impossible with God. Mary takes a deep breath. I can just imagine it. And she takes a stunning leap of faith. Luke 138, she says, Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary says yes to what God wants to do in her life. And what God wants to do in her life is pretty amazing and miraculous. And mysterious. But this decision that she made reveals that she is the favored one. She's willing to put her complete trust in God. She calls herself the servant of the Lord, not mother of the Messiah. She could have easily claimed that title, right? So in doing so, she becomes a model of servanthood for the rest of us. If we are going to follow an authentic Jesus... We each need to be a servant of the Lord. This means finding the Lord's favor through faith, the favored one. Believing that God is always with us, Emmanuel. Trusting that Jesus is to save us. And we need to show obedience to the Son of the Most High. Serving God as Mary did begins with saying yes. When we see the names favored one, Emmanuel, Jesus Son of the Most High. Anything else is just a a weak replacement for the real deal, genuine article. Look, I like the Christmas Jesus. And I'm sure some of you are with me. Yet he did grow up. As Grandpa Chip said, he had a beard. So do not let the world define for you who Jesus is. Jesus is not Santa Claus. It's not the Easter Bunny. But let the Son of the Most High God redefine the world through you, through your faith. Let's pray about that. Emmanuel, Jesus, Son of God, Son of the Most High Lord, You announced your arrival to Joseph and Mary. But today, Lord, announce it to us in a new way. Let today be the day, perhaps for the first time for some of us, that we really understand what it means to be your follower. Yes, you're a baby. We celebrated Christmas and we share presents. But your life was a model for servanthood and sacrifice. You were persecuted so that we may live. You died and was buried and was resurrected so we may know resurrection. But none of that could have happened if you did not first favor us, favor your servant, come into the world to 
be both human and divine in that oddly mysterious way. Lord, let us today know the genuine Jesus. Let that be the Jesus we follow. And let that be the Jesus that we demonstrate for the world in this Christmas season. All this we pray in the name of the one that created us, the Word of God, Jesus Christ, and that very real and present Holy Spirit, God with us. Amen. Join hands with your neighbors and receive this benediction. May the God of hope and peace and joy and love go with you now as you demonstrate to the world what it means to follow the real deal article, the genuine Jesus. Let us be the example for this world that so desperately needs to know of a Savior. Share that story. Go in peace. Amen.